Dagon. Beware of the spirit of Dagon. D-A-G-O-N. Dagon. Dagon is the name of the spirit. Amen. Dagon was the chief god of the Philistines. He was known as the god of the grain and the harvest. Amen? Amen. But he was the chief god of the Philistines. The Philistines was always the enemy of God. Amen? So anything that's a god besides our god, the one and only god, is a, a, a demon. It's a spirit. It's not of God. It's how many lords? One lord. One one, amen, it's one Lord, one faith, one baptism, it's one God. He's in us all, he's through us all. It's no other God before him. He's the Alpha, the Omega, he's the beginning and the end. It's no other God but him. At the name of who? Jesus. Every knee shall what? Wow. And every tongue shall what? Yes. That who is Lord? Jesus. Okay, amen. So Dagon is a spirit. He's a demonic spirit. Amen? Yes. He's a demonic spirit. Let me tell y'all. Dagon. Let me, let me tell y'all this. Dagon was a, a demonic spirit. But let me tell y'all, he has some... He got some people. It's like a like a pyramid. And the top leader of Dagon was Satan. Then on the side of Satan, I want to go down. It's like a pyramid. Apollyon. Mm -hmm. This is his accomplices. Do you understand? He has accomplices. Most spirits have spirits connected to him. It's never always just one spirit. So we have Satan who's the ring leader, he's the father of it. Then we have Apollyon, who I taught on a couple of weeks ago. Then we have Leviathan, who is Leviathan? The right. king demon right. of pride. Right. Then we have Bilal, mm -hmm. amen, another god that I'm going to teach you. Then we have Dagon. Connected to the spirit Dagon, with the rest of the spirit, is the spirit of rebellion, pride, power hungry, oppression and torture of God's people. So the enemy oppresses and tortures God's people. How many people get tormented in the mind? Tortured. Amen? Amen. Oppress. Oppress is when something has you bound and you can't get free. You're not possessed but you're oppressed. You can't get it off for you no matter how you try. These the spirits now, but Dagon, we're on Dagon. Idolatry, immorality, fornication, disobedience, uh, uh, poverty, greed, lust, false teaching, deception. Perverting God's word. Now we're going to go deep, okay? But not too deep. How does this spirit, Dagon, gain entrance into a person? Y'all got to write it down. How does he get in? How does Dagon, this spirit, get in, gain entrance, be able to control you, be able to possess you, be able to control your everything? Listen to how Dagon gets in. Through failure to tithe the first tenth of your income where you receive your spiritual food. Uh, uh, let, let me say this again because I, I didn't hear no. Uh, mm -hmm. Through failure, Dagon gains entrance into a person through failure to tithe the first tenth of your income where you receive your spiritual food. Amen. Listen. Dagon is a powerful spirit. Amen. And once Dagon has a hold, it's the day. It ain't no joke. Now listen, that's not the only way. For church leadership, who is church leadership? 
pastors. But who else? Our affairs, prayer warriors, deacons, first lady, bishop, pastor, prophet, church leadership. Through using tithe money given to God, God inappropriately or contrary to what God requires. Pimp daddies, big old pimps, they taking the tithes, they buying them cattle. They taking the ties, they buying uh, uh, Benzes. Oh, first lady suited and booted. Every tie to come in and they using it inappropriately. Amen? And then they steady pimping the people. I need more. I need more. I'm paying the ties. I'm doing, and I need more, but you, you need more. The bills do, but you're driving a new car. You, you didn't think about that? They got interest, of, interest into a person. Complacency. For those who are in church complacent, who say in their heart, the Lord will not do good, nor will he do evil. Just sitting here, whatever. Whatever God do, he do. You complacent. You don't, you're not in expectation of God to do anything. You're just complacent in what you do. You just come into church just to sit here. You're not expecting him to do nothing miraculous in your life. And you're not expecting for him to move anything. You're not expecting. You're complacent in what you in. That's, 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 that's what being complacent in your heart. Sitting in church saying, God, he ain't going to do no good. What's the sense of going to church? How many just sat up here and said, what's the sense? Ain't nothing happening good for me. How many even said that? God ain't did nothing for me. <coughs> I might as well do what I want to do. Because ain't nothing going to happen. Everybody else do what they want to do. And don't nothing happen to them. So what can I do? God ain't going to do no good or evil. Being complacent in yourself. Being complacent in your mess. Amen? Amen. Being complacent in what you feel like. The Lord will not do any good nor evil. Yes, he will. Oh, please believe God going to do, regardless of what you're thinking, being in complacency. Through idolatry, especially if you are a spiritual leader. What is idolatry? Anything that you worship above God. Be it a man, your job. Your money, anything, anything that you put before God, anything that you told God, hold up, wait a minute. Let me go here and see this first. Let me do this first. Oh, church ain't important. I don't have to go every week because I want to do this this time. I, that man want me. He calling me. <laughs> wait a minute, wait. I'm not going to go to church this week. Don't keep calling me. Get off my phone, Kiki. <coughs> don't call me, Irma. I don't want to go. Do you understand? You because that thing, that thing you didn't place before God, has become an idol to you. Amen. Amen. Listen, through sexual immorality and fornication, this is how day God enters. Especially if you are connected to your church or your church leadership. Y'all ain't get that. Let me tell that again. Sexual immorality and fornication, especially if it is connected to your church leadership. Wow. Wow. Dagon <laughs> can enter okay. through your church leader, through sex. This, this is especially for the pastors, mm. the bishops, who think you're doing something. You think you're getting away with something because you're doing your members. Wow. And you ain't doing them but passing all these spirits to your members. You let them think it's all right. You think it's all right. You know, I can do what I want to do with the tithes. I ain't got to pay the tithes. I ain't got to do. This is especially for church leadership. Mm. Amen. But who are leadership in here? <laughs> Sexual contact with sexual with leaders through abuse of spiritual authority, claiming physical benefits due to spiritual positions. This applies to church leadership 
who demand benefits beyond the church's means for their own personal comfort and upliftment. I want this on YouTube quick. Amen. Amen. I want this on there quick. Amen. So what they doing, church leadership, they're taking their authority and they're abusing it. They're abusing their spiritual rights and their authority as pastors and bishops to actually mislead God's people. Actually, they're, well, we, well, as leaders, we have to live a certain way. We have to walk a certain way, leaders. Listen to me. You have to walk a certain way. You cannot live a raggedy life and call yourself being saved. Call yourself lead nobody. How can a blind lead the blind? You're going to lead me right into some horse maneuver. You're going to lead me right into some cow maneuver. You can't lead me. I can't follow you because you ain't following Christ. You understand? For real, for real. The Bible says mock the perfect man. If, I, if you ain't following Christ, I can't follow you. I don't play that. I don't dib and dab. No. No. That, you know that pastor? I don't know. I just, I'm not going to judge, but that ain't for me. You doing what? Man, baby, I get it in. What? You see, sister, so and so and so and so and so and so. I get it in, all of them. Well, you go ahead and get it in. I'm going to get it out. I'm going to step off this thing. Because, you see, see, anything that you condone, you compromising with it. A spirit of compromise will come upon you because you love your pastor. You don't love nothing greater than God. Because I love my pastor don't mean I compromise. No. That's the same thing that happened with who? Aaron. Aaron compromised some things. And he ended up dropping dead, watching his leader, his pastor, do some everything. We can't compromise. I don't care if it's your sister. If they're a leader. Sister Pam. So Carol can't do anything in front of you. She's a leader. Amen? Mm -hmm. And you can't compromise. Well, it, you know, she ain't the pastor. All right, no. So it's the Irma. So they can't do anything in front of you. She's a leader. Amen? Do y'all understand me? Amen. Leadership goes a long way. It ain't no big chief little Indians. not over here. Amen? Mm -hmm. We all try to do one thing, that's save souls. We try to get the soul saved for Christ, for the kingdom. I ain't here to play games with nobody. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I ain't going to put no sugar with the powder sugar. I ain't, I ain't doing all that. We ain't going to do all that over here. Either you live in form or you ain't. For God I live, for God I die. I cannot compromise with you because you my son. I can't play with you because you my daughter. I can't, either you're in or you're out. He said, what? Either you're hot or you're cold. If you look warm, I'll spit you out. Spit you out. Spit you out. You know? So listen, listen, listen. Um, uh, through bloodline sin, this is how he gained interest. Wow. Through bloodline sins of the ancestors. What? This is how a lot of spirits gain right, interest. Right. Through blood, bloodline sin. That's why I always tell y'all, curse the generational curses on your life. Ten generations back. Ten bloodlines. Even go further than to the origin. The origin is when it first began. You want to know why you was a hoe? Because somebody long time ago was a hoe. Listen. Listen. You want to know why you was a thief? I don't know what's wrong. Go somewhere and find somebody and say, listen, I'm a thief. And I want to know where this thing come from. Because more than none, more than anything, you got it from somebody. That spirit, most, either it's through transference. 